Hey, this is Dr. Dan Cooper here with Rad Life Clinic and Revolution After Dust Off. We're going to give you some advice for how to prepare for and then recover from 17.3. I've got Madeline with me to demonstrate. And the first thing I want to talk about is the fact this is a squat snatch and chest to, to bar pull up ladder. So you've got a lot of overhead and you've got to get deep into that squat because if you don't, you've got a huge lever arm with your torso plus your arms overhead. So if you're not straight, you're going to fatigue like a mad person. Okay, so first thing, we will stretch out pec minors, lats, and teres major so you can get that external rotation into the overhead position. So pick a bar and you can either do it, oh, that might be too high for you. <laughs> so overhead, you can do two arms or you can do one arm. Either way, you're going to step through with one of your legs and straighten the arms and you're going to lunge forward, pressing your body forward. Your arms are pinned by the bar. You should feel a pretty significant stretch in either the chest or the lats, Terry's major. Um, whichever one is tightest on you, you're gonna feel. Okay, next is going to be a lateral bend in the bar. I was planning on doing this banded, but since I'm traveling and I don't have bands with me, we can do it hanging out of the bar. And just picture it with a with a band. <laughs> um, so you're gonna stand sideways on the bar, grab it with one of your hands, which one you got there. Okay, so you're gonna then lean this way with arm overhead. There you go. This is Jimmy. <laughs> okay, that is for the lat. Break your radialis. That is a friend of your bicep. It's super used in the overhand pulling position, like in a chest bar pull-up. So to stretch that, it's like you're pointing away. We used it in 17.2. You're going to point away, hit the rig, and then press your body through. You should feel it at the top of the forearm here, into the bicep. And you can give little wiggles with angle to hit it right when you, you, know, when you feel it stretch and it feels right probably is right okay uh, bar hang this is short we've got a lot of pulls in this thing so you don't want to smoke your grip too much but just to further open up the overhead position just go high bar all you can do grab the bar and hang I would really give this like a three to five second hang um, just to limber up that really open position all right come on off okay now we've got this deep squat that you want to have as a totally free motion. You don't want to get restricted and have your body fall forward. So one I like for this, so face the pole, grab the pole, get into a squat, a little wider feet like you're in a, a real squat with a snatch. Good. And as you're sitting in this, you'll feel where you're tight. I, if it were me, it would be right where the hamstring connects with my ischial tubes and you can give little shifts right and left to personalize it a little bit. Okay, come on out of that. Hip flexors are gonna be another one. When you've got a weight overhead like that, you've got a long lever arm and you're trying to stabilize. When you're in that deep squat, your hip flexors are shortened and they're gonna be participating in the stabilization action. So if they are any kind of not happy, they're gonna be extra not happy being shortened and trying and having a load placed on them. So hip flexors that we're concerned with in this instance are going to be the psoas and iliacus, also known as the iliopsoas. Easy stretch for these guys. This is where we get into the lunge. You press the body forward as a unit, so there's no bending forward, bending back. You press the whole thing forward until you get a tension at the front of the hip that has the leg in the back. Once you get that tension, hands can go out front and then rotate away from the back leg. Some people like an arm up. Same story though, get the tension, arm goes up and you rotate away from the back leg. And you should feel the, the tension kind of zip up into your abdomen. That's the tension following up the psoas. If for some reason you don't feel the tension come up and it's just really intense at the hip, it just means your iliac is tighter than your psoas. Don't sweat it, keep at it. All right, recovery from this monstrosity of pulls. Um, your forms are gonna be roasted. Uh, just be okay with that fact. Uh, easy stretches for forearms. 
Let's start with the extensor side. So you make a fist, grab the fist with the other hand, and then roll it on back, extend the elbow. There you go. And you should feel a significant stretch on the back of your forearm. All right, now for the other side of the forearm, the flexor side. I've got round bars here. A rig would be better. You can do it on the ground as well. You can do it against the wall. Either way, you're going to post the hand so the fingers are downward and then press into it so the palm of your hand hits the surface, whether it's the floor, a wall, or the rig. And if you want a little extra stretch on it, you can squat, bring the forearm below the wrist. And the thing that I enjoy doing on this one, because it hits the, the specific spots on mine that are tighter, is try to rotate your hand while it's pinned. The hand shouldn't move, but just doing that tugs on the forearm flexors in a special kind of way. So you find the one that's tight on you and just use that motion. All right, another one that we're gonna use for the forearms because they are going to be blasted is the lacrosse ball. We also use this as a 17.2. And lacrosse ball, you can use a foam roller too, really. Um, either way, you're going to, I don't have a lacrosse ball here. I'm traveling, my bad. Um, but you can use it on the ground. A countertop is kind of nice. You can stand there instead of squatting on the ground. Um, but you're going to roll the ball along the forearm extensors. You can rock it side to side and continue to roll. You can do the same thing with the forearm flexors as you're rolling across. You can post up your other hand on top if you want a little extra pressure. Uh, so there's some variations to it. Next is going to be that brachioradialis stretch again, because by now you'll have believed me that the brachioradialis got roasted during these pull-ups. So come back to it, this is the point away. Hit the either wrist or the, the hand on the rig and then turn away. Okay, your glutes probably pretty tight, pretty sore, something like that. Um, you can get back into the squat if you want to stretch the, the glutes. Just come into it and squat. So you're you're carrying some of your weight here with your arms so you're not you're exerting yourself much, but you're getting the mobility in there. Um, you can do a standing glute stretch where you're pulling and you can pull across. Again, finding the precise angle that is most useful for you. Another one I really like is for the lateral glutes. So well, there's a lot of stabilization going, as I mentioned, during an overhead squat or a snatch, and these are squat snatches, so you're doing both. So getting those lateral stabilizers to limber up, you can grab onto something. Uh, if you're really cool, you can do it freestanding. I'll do it that way. <laughs> and all you're doing is throwing your leg side to side to the extent of wherever your range of motion goes. And one thing, if you would have noticed, I'm not doing is rotating my pelvis across. So you're keeping the pelvis forward while swinging the leg and bouncing off your end ranges of motion. It's a great limber move. Uh, if you've been sitting a long time, it's awesome for that too. Airplanes, be the cool guy in the back in the galley, swinging your leg around. Um, and the next is the low back. Inevitably, you got tired during this workout and your form was questionable, so your low back probably did a lecture work than it should. Let's foam roll the low back. Um, again, I'm in dirt, so I'm not gonna pretend I've got a foam roller. Um, however, you're gonna foam roll your low back in this way. When you lay on your back with the foam roller, foam roller is placed in the small of your back, and you're going to roll toward your feet and then back up headward, going across the low back up into mid back. One thing you're going to want to make sure you do during this is that if I'm posted straight up and I'm perpendicular to the ground, you want to angle yourself slightly off to one side and then do the rolling. Um, it'll hit the lumbar stabilizers a lot better and it's just a more effective roll. And then obviously you go the other side and, and repeat. So that is our super quick recovery. It's not super quick. You can spend as much time as this is on you as you want. The warm up you might want to do quick just so you're not overstretching and then weakening muscles prior to the workout but now that we're complete enjoy the stretches really get into them and you'll probably want to do these and, and the mobilizations not do the stretches but the mobilizations as well you're gonna to want to do these for a few days uh, if you went as hard as some you're gonna to want to do it for a few days so this is our super quick while well, the sun's going down hopefully it's not too dark in that camera 17.3 advice for preparation and recovery I look forward to seeing you next time